Hey, what's up, everybody? Joey JP here, checking in live, respectmyregion.com. Coming to you guys live from the 2024 showroom floor of the Flower Expo. We're in Greenfield, Massachusetts. I've got a very special guest, Todd. What's going on? Friend? How are you doing today, my man? Good. How are you, man? Thanks for having me. I'm honestly pretty stoned, but I remember you saying gold leaf is the strain. Right. Green line genetics. Can alive genetics. Can alive genetics. Yeah, yeah totally wrong <laughs> i'm gonna still blame it on the bottle bloom dabs today's episode is powered by bottle bloom and trees and then definitely stone before this episode taking a dab or two shout out to those guys it, it does happen man it, you know this is a consumption event it is. there's business there's networking you are here representing your company you just told me you you're in 10 locations now yes. one strain it's a smaller craft operation I want to know how you got into cannabis. What were you doing before? And how has it been? And what was it like getting into it? Um, I've been in the legacy market since 1986. Okay, so you've been doing this a while. I've been, I've been at it for a while. And through that, I worked in the music industry. 1986? That's 38 years. I'm, I'm 22 years old. So you've been doing it a long time, man. Wow, that's impressive. Obviously not growing that whole time, but participating in some fashion. Absolutely, absolutely. We're growing for about the last 10 years. Okay. And when we were creating custom chains that we did in the, in, the, in the legacy market, and the opportunity came up here to have a micro business and all these other things that Massachusetts carved out. Yep. For people who don't have, you know, multi-stain money, uh, we gave it an opportunity to jump. Especially after the pandemic kind of crashed and used the chemistry on me. I've been there for 25 years. I had done a lot of things I'd set out to do, so... It seemed to be a pretty good time to pivot into something else. That makes sense. There's such an overlap between music and the counterculture back then. Now it's normal culture just to be at music festivals and concerts. And we're saying just weed being smoked on Netflix and every show, all these different series and shows. The normalization over that time has changed, right? Absolutely. The progression, the legalization, the advocation. Shit, look at this business room that we're in right now. All this commotion, right? You're a smaller operator. You're here at Mass, it's a smaller market. How are you surviving? How are you able to thrive in this environment? We tend to work a little differently than most people. I bring a lot of the marketing and brand building experience in the music industry over to cannabis because I look at it kind of the same way. We're building experiences around the product that gives an experience. With the music kind of gives the same sort of thing. Absolutely. So we're able to take a lot of the identity seeds that we work with people on the music side and then transition them in the way that we interact with them with cannabis. So in some ways, you are making art and music and building relationships and uh, what is it, cultivating community and all these things, the traditional realm from what we do in music. And then you take all that and then you create strains, which is creating music, a new piece of our new custom creation, right? Basically a new CD. Yeah. New CD. New takes new production, a.k.a. making something, producing something. Walk me through what it's like you producing a strain. How do you come up with gold leaf? How do you come up with the next one? So we have, uh, so gold leaf took about four years to develop because it was the first thing that I developed. So I didn't really understand how things worked until I understood you can use RO water and pollinate through that. A couple of the tricks that ate it a lot more easy to contain. And we do it in small rooms our development facility. There's only 24 plants in the world. So it was a lot of learning which genetics to breed into things to get the results that I wanted. Yeah. So we have a stable of like five or six genetics that I breed in from stock strain. I have one that breeds in something skunky. I have one that breeds in this and that that I already like because those existing things. Yeah. I just keep them in the cut and use them to bring these characteristics into whatever it is that we're building. So I'll Your own version of curation, just like, you know, you choose the artist you want in the room to make the song you want for the CD, right? Yeah, yeah. We all start with the same thing and we just add our little bit of spices to it and Sometimes it takes 18 months, sometimes it takes three years. It depends on how lucky we get, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Into the phenos, but we eventually get there. We've got six on deck and we're working on our seven. So usually at this point in my trade shows, my events, my interviews, where I'm like, damn, you know, you're telling me all this stuff about the weed. I'm hearing good things from other people. I think it's time to chirp check you. So what do you have in your bag, my friend? What you, what you packing, Todd? Let's see. This is our gold leaf. So okay. It's the first strain that we built. It's sativa heavy, heavy limonene, heavy mercenary. Wow. So it's very calming, very anti-anxiety. We made it for it. I made it for myself in the legacy market because I have a lot of anxiety. So I needed something that I could smoke a lot of without having to crash the fuck out all the time. So when we decided to run it through the music program that we're doing now with the strains, it just turned out to work really well for that as well. 
I love it. It's sweet. It's creamy. I can sense the citrus and smell that. The, the, there's floral citrus in there as well. I already know that smoking this and going out there in that beautiful sun, it's going to be much more euphoric. Everything's a little bit brighter and warm up than it is. It's one of those trays. It's a beautiful packaging as well. You guys can check it out. Get an up close view real quick. Absolutely attractive. So the chirp check passes. Big shout out to this. Please. Now, have you ever have you ever dabbed rosin before? I have. We have. Have you tried bottle bloom stuff? I have. We yeah. Have. What are you? What, last night. what are your thoughts on their rosin product? I had to go home shortly thereafter. We, it was it was flavorful and potent, flavorful. right? Well, it was, it was the word. I woke up and I was like, wow, I'm definitely still. No. I had about half a joint left. I had to put that out and it was time to go. Yeah. I had a long so, drive home. Big shout out to our sponsors, Bottle Blue, man. Bring Haven the way for us to be here in Massachusetts. Trees.io as well, point of sale group. Big shout out to those groups, man, for giving us the opportunity to talk to legacy guys like you guys, providing a platform. If you were to give some words of advice to people trying to get in cannabis, what would you recommend for people that are trying to be a small craft operator and not just survive, but thrive? Uh, my first advice would be don't. Um, but my second advice is if you're really going to jump off the cliff, be authentic. We are. Right? Like, that's really the thing that cuts through the noise of all the other kind of clowns that are in the industry is just an authentic story and sticking to it and being true to what it is that you bring to the community that you build. Absolutely. And the support will come. It'll take a little longer, right? Of course. The support will be stronger. Not everybody was the most popular person at their small high school or college that they went to or is good at LinkedIn or Instagram or viral shit, right? You, most people that were growing the last few years, they were growing. They weren't on the internet yep. doing those things. They were in the grow and taking care of plants and trimming and stuffing free rolls and all this shit, right? Like, so I, you can't expect everybody to be great at everything. Well, you can't expect everybody to be famous for everything. Yeah. Right? Like, we live in this culture where you have the Jungle Boys and Sea Junkies and all these other people who've laid a brand out of being famous for being good at growing weed. Absolutely. So there's a lot of people who are good at, I don't want to say I'm that good, right? But there are a lot of people who are good at growing weed that get overshadowed because there is this culture of yeah. these high numbers or nothing, right? And there's no nuance in the experience that comes along. A hundred percent. Well, I appreciate you being on the show with us today. Thank you for your time. You, sir. Todd, Analyze Genetics, make sure you guys tap in. Support the little the, the product that we have here. Gold Leaf and his strain, available at 10 locations. Which, uh, which locations do you want to shout out today before we get out of here? Uh, I definitely want to shout out Mello uh, up in Haverhill with Jarrell. They're definitely good people. Uh, Apex Salar downtown with Tito. Uh, Black Stone Valley Cannabis is definitely doing good things. Uh, and the goods out in Somerville for sure. Hell yeah, man. Massachusetts Three. Cannabis doing big things. Support and legacy craft operators, man. Make sure you guys tap in. Today's journey brought to you guys by Trees, Bada Bloom, Gold Leaf right here. Make sure you guys go ask for it. We'll see you on the next episode. We out. Peace.